Hello everyone, welcome to Form Line. We head to Rose Hill on Saturday for two feature three-year-old races. Mm -hmm. The San Domenico over 1,100, the up-and-coming over 1,300 metres. Ten races, and here to look at it. Ron Duffersey, Brad Ray and Tim Ryan. Yeah, an interesting uh, day. Well, I think back on a hard track, I think the cobwebs had to be brushed out of the hoses because I might have got a drop of water on these tracks of uh, the last couple of days and maybe into Saturday. Looks a pretty straightforward meeting to me, which is always dangerous. You can get overconfident. Um, but pretty confident about it. Yeah, it's all about the up-and-coming, isn't it, as far as Autumn Glow, and then, of course, there in the San Domenico, we get to see the return of Storm Boy. So all eyes on Storm Boy and Gatsby's. Can he back up what he did there mm. first up where he was so dominant? Mm. Of these early season three-odd races, there's always so many different opinions, bookies' opinions, punters' opinions, barrier trials, the old form, the new form, the off-season form, putting it all together. It's a great puzzle, um, and punters have loved uh, those two races. They are two highest holding uh, races on the card, the two three-year-old races, but a really good card and looking forward to having a, a good, good track there on Saturday. A good, good track. Yeah. I'll get your thoughts on the track after we hear this track update from Rose Hill this morning. Rose Hill Gardens ahead of Clubs New South Wales West Metro San Domenico Stakes Day on Saturday. A great day of racing. We've got two Group 3 races, including the Smithfield RSL San Domenico Stakes and the CMNL Up and Coming Stakes. Uh, and it's great to see some of the stars with me is Sean Patterson and Sean, uh, a lot of big names out on Saturday. Yeah, look, it's going to be an awesome start to our carnival. Uh, we'll prep for the carnival. We've got good tracks going around. It's a nice sunshine, so really looking forward to it. Yeah, there is a lot of sunshine. Can you tell us what is the track at the moment? What's it done to the surface? Yeah, look, we're a genuine four. Obviously, we've hit that, that little bit of early spring, which we just hope hangs around for a bit longer uh, till we get some more consistent weather. But look, yesterday was quite windy, uh, fair bit of heat, about 29 degrees yesterday. That's just kind of taking us to a genuine four. Slow improvement still, um, nice moisture in the ground. So we'll give it a little bit of uh, irrigation today just to keep it at that high side of a fall and uh, get through another windy day forecast tomorrow, about 30 degrees tomorrow, and then see how we go come Saturday. Okay, what is the forecast for the rest of the week? You said it is windy tomorrow? Yeah, windy and hot tomorrow. Um, and then on Saturday, it's looking at about 25 degrees. We have a little bit of wind, not too much. That will have some sort of play on the day and how it runs. Look, we're just gonna make sure we've got the nice bit of moisture in it, keep it that good fall, get through the windy day tomorrow and present a nice track on Saturday. Yeah, the track is looking really in good order. Now, the rail, uh, last uh, time out here two weeks ago, was in the true, and what is it on Saturday? Yeah, look, we were lucky to get through the last meeting on a relatively good to soft track, so the wear wasn't too bad. So we just went off the two metres to make sure we get the best uh, you know, majority of having all the track for them to run on, make sure it's as fair as possible, and uh, make sure that we use all the ground. So it's in good condition, um, and looking forward to racing. Yeah, really encourage everyone to get out here on Saturday for a really good race day. See raising money for charity as well and uh, a fantastic day. Good forecast as well as we count down to Carnival. Make sure you get your tickets at theraces.com.au and Sean, best of luck for Saturday. Thank you. OK, Tim Ryan, what is a good, good track? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we're out, we're out of uh, winter now yep. and um, hoping that we'll have a good track kind of more on the firm side. Mm. Um, and I'm really looking forward to rail two metres there on Saturday. I think like the two, three metre position there at Rose Hill, um, they're the fairest positions, yep. um, and I think every horse will get their chance. Uh, midway is where we kick off uh, the benchmark 72. This week's midway over 1,800 metres. Yes, yeah, so we'll kick off this market with Ajita. It is your new favourite in the race. Went up second favourite, $5.50 yesterday. It's the best back runner in the race, $5.50 into $4.80. Then we're out to Arts, who was your early favourite. I'm not sure we've seen a Group 3 winner in a midway as of yet, but here we go with Arts. $4.60 on opening, no money for it just at this stage. $4.60 out to $5.50. Forecaster went up six, it's just out of roll to $6.50. Dr. Evil unchanged there as an $8 chance. Promito has seen a little bit of support, 11 into 10, as has Koning, $13 into $10. And we're out to Ambassador at $11 cent before it's 15. But best backed runner, a Jeter in the first, albeit the smallest holding race on the card so far. Yeah, I think Forecast is the fastest horse, especially Barrier 1, 1800, getting around that you know, turn pretty quickly. Um, then we got Order to Charge, Coning maybe, Semper Fortis back from 2,500. Uh, metres, but did go for has been going forward. But I, I think Forecaster gets around that uh, first turn quite comfortably in front. To Tim's point, what about this pair? They're both five now, Arts and Promito. Arts last win 
was in a group through Adrian Knox as a three-year-old. Primito's last win was as a two-year-old in a group two <laughs> yeah. Skyline. I know. So we're winding down the clock. 73 weeks for Arts and 130 weeks for Primito, and they're both in my numbers because they're both perfect races for both of them. So I like the step out uh, to the 1800 metres for both. Uh, Primito, his game here, he keeps grinding away at the finish. And Arts, she had two runs back, but it's a bit deceptive because she hasn't had any luck on both occasions. Finds James McDonald, third up. I'm thinking she's ready to win. Here is this uh, midway from a fortnight ago with the grey forecaster leading them up. He's been very tough. Now, he's put two good midway runs together now at this track. So I think we can trust him on that. He's going to take up the running here. He gets first look at the inside on a dry track. Just probably has to run the 1800 right out. But I think he, the way he's been uh, knuckling down and having a go and he, how fit he is now, oh, I think he can't do anything... Uh, bar run well here. He never throws it away. So I think he's hit his form and if he holds it, he's right in this race. Here's a Jeter, a horse they had high hopes as a staying three-year-old. Yeah, raced his way through to a Queensland derby where he ran fifth, albeit beaten 15 lengths uh, by Warmonger. So uh, here he is first up. This was, so he's on the 10-day turnaround. Uh, so obviously he's bounced through this fine. Uh, David Payne's wasted no time to get him back to the races and to get him out in trip. Here he was 1,400 metres, straight out to 1,800 metres. He's doing his best work through the line, as you'd expect. And this is a pretty deep midweeker. Uh, Yorkshire was there. Uh, we saw Rock Empire house of cards and he's just nipping away late so that sets up his campaign well I think he, he's going to, yeah, I don't think he can miss each way here, forecaster, I've got him on top uh, all he has to do is reproduce and he's right in this race Arts, she's quite likeable she did run into those dead ends at a vital stage the other day and should have finished closer uh, the timing's right, they found McDonald you're going to pay a little Joe Mac tax there but it might be worthwhile, Ajita promised had a wrap on him early on, so I think second up 1800 is is good for him. And this horse, the carpet bagger, I mean, it's going to be 50 to 1 or so, uh, a real dry tracker, and there was really good improvement in that dry track in the lead up there at Hawkesbury. And I just see a little bit of value in him from an inside draw doing no work. Yeah, I'm keen on the chances of arts. I'm hoping I can start the day with a bang, one of the better bets across the card. A Gita hard enough to hold out, as long as he's still got a little bit of speed in his legs. He'll run well second up out to the 1800 metres. Promito will be thereabouts and forecast. It just has to run out a strong 1800 metres, but could get on speed favours. Uh, Phillies and mares in race to the Maryland Zara Soil Club. It's over 1500 to benchmark 78. We've had a really good move here for Vivier. Went up second pick yesterday. $4.60 first price we bet about her. She's now into favourite. as a $3.50 chance. James McDonald on. Uh, one of several James McDonald rides that have been heavily back there on Saturday. Sequestered. I thought she'd found her right race. I was happy to put her up favourite, but she's been displaced as favourite, but unchanged as a $3.60 chance. So Rose, uh, a few bets for her at $6. She's into $5.50. It's a knockout, unchanged from $6. And the rest are just getting out here. Mountaintop, 8 out to 9. Lady Boss, 11 out to 12. And Sweet Mercy, 15 out to $18. But Vivier, one of the better back runners on the program. Yeah, looks a solo lead here for It's a Knockout. Gets a few favours up front. Uh, Lady Boss can roll forward. Other than that, I think it's going to be a real little battle of tactics. Um, yeah, I, I just uh, can't see too much else. Uh, maybe Vivier might go more forward than a couple of the maps are suggesting, but uh, jumping to 1500, but it's all about, it's a knockout here. Yes, here is the horse they've backed, Vivi, yeah, 12 to 1500 a month between runs. Yeah, given the expectations here, she was a little bit plain to the eye, but then you have a second look and she's just probably not a 1200 metre horse. I think you have to uh, weigh into the equation here that she was a pretty firm favourite, going around a, a $2.50 chance, albeit she was a little bit easy late. The first two to the home bend were the first two home. She was was just warming up through the line. James McDonald sticks, month between runs, but straight out to 1,500 metres. So uh, she's a new addition to the Kieran Mars stable. Uh, they say that she's going particularly well. Would have liked to have seen a touch more pressure on paper, but other than that, I do think she gets her chance to bounce back. OK, uh, Zorro's and It's a Knockout running the Quinella. Yeah, look, It's a Knockout did a good job getting to a Saturday race at a second start. I quite like her. She's by done deal, so you think there's more to offer. Uh, she's got racing pattern on her side here, and I think she's got plenty of upside to come. In saying that, uh, Zorro's has come back stronger, better, and uh, does a really good job to get home. But uh, is the, the tempo of this race going to be a little bit slower here? And that may just go against her with her pattern. But there's not much between them, but... 
um, the way this race is going to be run, I think it, it's a knockout, so um, got a, a good little knockout chance. Let's have a look at Sequestered. Yeah, I, I think this looks a race. Snatch has just got to be on his toes a little bit early and, and find up closer to the midfield position, bit of cover, and she's ready to produce now. She's third up. She hits 1,500 uh, for the first time this prep. She's won at the distance. And um, I just feel it's a, just a perfect race for her. Um, hitting the peak at the right time. She squeezes through, dashes through late. Uh, wasn't beaten far less than a length. So I just think the timing's right for her to perform in what looks a very, very suitable race. All right, and Brad, what about Mountaintop? First up, Provincial. Second up, Midweek third up, trying to remain unbeaten on a Saturday. Very much a mare in form, this mountaintop. So she took seven starts to break her maiden, but she simply returned uh, a completely different animal. So it was a good winner there at Newcastle, was heavily backed here at Canterbury and made a long, wide, sustained looping run and was still too strong to the run home. So uh, she's another horse here that probably won't be suited by a lack of pressure, where she's drawn in her typical pattern. We'll see her get back, but no real knock given the form that she finds herself in and getting some weight relief. I like Sequestered here. I think she's going to be very, very hard to beat given a trouble-free run. I feel Vivier is the danger. I was hot on her first up and she I, I was disappointed with her, but I think you're right. I, I just feel the 1,200 was against her and they've gone back to the drawing board a month off, straight to a, put a bit more work into her, straight to uh, the 1500 here, uh, deserves another chance. It's a knockout, it's going to give a good kick from the front and Zeroes does good work late again. Yeah, I want to pay plenty of respect to that SP uh, from last start, uh, Vivier, and I am happy to lean her way. Uh, she is a nice mare and she has performed in group company in the past. Sequestered uh, gets her chance, maybe on top of the ground for the first time this campaign, can see her produce her best. She showed a, a sparkling little turn of foot there between the six to the 200 metres, and I thought, here we go, she's going to put this race away, but just peaked that last little bit, didn't go right on with it. Eight Zeroes, a much better win than the margin, did suggest last start, overcoming a muddling run race. Her last 200 metre split was the quickest across the entire day, and it's a knockout. Could get on speed favours and does get a little weight swing in her favour against Zeroes. OK, we'll take our first break. Back with the highway. Now to the highway this week, 1400, class two. Yeah, huge field to kick off this highway. Um, we've seen the two at the top of the betting, both seen some pretty good support here. Super Norwest, um, it's got some good recent highway runs there, placed at its last three starts all in highways. It's been 440 into $3.70 and your best back runner in the race. The Volcanic Love, also a firmer, it comes off some Brisbane form, which we've seen work in highways before. It's been 480 into 420. Duke Calzini resuming here, unchanged as a $10 chance. Ballandary Sal uh, has had a bit of support despite drawing wide, 15 into $12. And then the two best backed at longer odds, Sibylla, 19 into 17, and Mischievous Molly, 23 into $19. Uh, looks a pretty easy lead for Super Nor West at 1400 for the first time. Uh, where else do we want to look here? Four Cade, my mate Kate, uh, Mischievous Molly can go forward. Um, red rags to the bull box seats just behind them there, but I think the favourite uh, takes up the running here. Very very little highway form in this field, but this horse has it, Super Norwest. Well placed in the past three highways behind Lon Rose Queen twice and Intervacity, who was too good for her the other day. So I think it's a highway that lacks depth, it lacks highway form, and other than swearing off making highway horses the better of the day, she would have been. Uh, I think she only has to hold her form to prove very, very hard to beat here. Um, very fit, up and running, level of consistency, dry track form's good. There's a lot of bush wet track form here that might not shape up at all. So I, I think there's a lot to like about her, other than uh, she's untried at 1400. Uh, Duke Calzini, uh, three-year-old, Daniel Seab took, it to, took it to Brisbane for a, a crack at a... Phoenix Stakes. He's probably have to going to give a start here. Look at him there getting way back in this trial. He's going to have to probably give a start being negative from that outer draw, but he is a young three-year-old who has got a bit of form. So, and he's got upside and he's got youth on his side. So he just uh, 
darts there when they ease down on the leader and gets the job done in the trial. So he's a very dangerous horse here with, um, like I say, plenty of upside to come. All right, Volcanic Love train at Grafton. They're trying to channel a bit of Matt Dunn here. Mm. <laughs> if you can't beat him, join him, yeah. I guess. Uh, he, I don't know where he fits in, so I was a little bit surprised to see him so firm in the market, but I guess you have to respect that, don't you? So uh, he went around in a daybreak lover last campaign, so just back in April where he was only beaten four and a half lengths. This was his first up run. He wasn't beaten far, a bit of a bunchy finish, but he was just set an impossible task from the wide gate, and he's chipping away into the margin late. So on class, he obviously deserves a lot of respect and as far as winning hopes go there's probably not many of them so I guess that's why he's so short. And what about up the country? Well that's to turn a, a run of placings into a win uh, but you certainly can't knock the consistency so trained by Holly Williams Holly's only had the horse for a handful of runs now since coming down from Queensland this scallop but I do like this form reference so this is behind Wings of Desire uh, the relation to Winks and I think she's having a little spell now with maybe some aspirations to target some black type races and they pair off from the rest uh, kept following the line here so uh, she's a mare that all she has to do is hold that and she's got to be some kind of player. Yeah, it's all about Super Norwest for me. I think she's very, very hard to beat here. Only has to hold that form to, to just about win. Duke Calzini's a big query. Uh, yard and late market watch. Volcanic Love. Uh, when I first picked up the form doing this race, I thought, yeah, yeah, it's got a little chance. And then it's got 58 kilos. And then the market went up 480. I thought, geez, well found and well protected. But it is probably the unknown here. And Mischievous Molly, I think uh, back to a drier track, can do something here uh, with any luck from a wide draw. Yeah, same for me, Super Nor West. Uh, she gets uh, the perfect setup, doesn't she? So 1,400 metres, you're right, Duff, in terms of that being the only little niggle, but the way that she ran out 1,300 metres last start and was holding the rest comfortably enough, uh, I think that bodes well for her getting the trip okay, particularly if she can get a little breather. That last start form reference does look strong with Listomania in third. Up the country, I want to respect that last run there at Newcastle behind Wings of Desire. Duke Calzini has some upside and Volcanic Love, best of the rest. Race four is the Campbelltown Catholic Club Handicap. It's a 2000 benchmark 78. Betting a little bit quiet for this 2000 metre race and of the interest in the race, most of it is with the favourite here in a notice. Went up $4 yesterday, uh, $4 into $3.70, the firm there. First light, your second pick, unchanged as a $6 chance. Rise to it, it's been $6 out to seven. Uh, it's also in in Melbourne, I believe more likely to run down there. I am the Empire, just out of roll, 8 out to 8.50. King of Clubs, uh, no money for it, resuming from a break, 8 out to 10. Uh, the Firmers at Longer Odds, Monarchs Bray, just in a roll, 11 into 10. And Aristonis, it's the next best backed outside of the favourite. It's been $15 into $12. Yep, it looks uh, Monarchs Prey, uh, Bray likes to go forward. I am Empire likewise. Rise to it, Kieran Ma is quoted as saying staying in Melbourne. So it looks a likely scratching, so we'll treat him as one. Other than that, um, there's not much else to tell you. It looks like we're going to be left with two on-pace horses here. I am the Empire drawn inside of Monarchs Bray. Here is uh, a notice runner-up at Rose Hill two weeks ago. Yeah, and he looks to have found another winnable race, hasn't he? So this is behind Etna Rosso, who they're talking about as a genuine Metrop chance. I have noted that he's been a big shortener in the past couple of weeks. I actually beat that horse to start prior. Here he was wide and working. Now, he did get first crack at finding that right lane on the day. However, uh, the fact that he did do a stack of work through the middle and early stages and was still hanging tough late... I think that says that he's come back really well. Uh, he's always shown and teased good staying talent, but I think he's really starting to, to put it all together this time back. Monarch's Bray, a bit disappointing, and the same can be said for Martuslin, who came into that same form reference. So that does look the, the pick of them, uh, a notice, but the market says as much. I am the Empire. Yeah, so he's a month between runs. He goes up in grade, down in weights. There he was flushed out relatively early at Warwick Farm. Uh, Footaim just nabs him late. Footaim has franked the form somewhat since. So uh, he probably just found the front uh, a little bit too early. Gaps back through the rest of the field. Uh, he does come through the midweeks, but it's a pretty easy transition to make, isn't it? The midweeks uh, into Saturday when you're that 2,000 metre style of horse. So maps to get all favours again and no real knock from me. Uh, now, into the second prep now for Waltham. He's only had the one start in Australia. Yeah, he's a lightly raced, untapped import. I've liked his two trials. Uh, I think he's got something, this horse. He was put away after one run last preparation. Uh, look, he's, he's 
I just like his two trials. And if he gets a tick off in the yard or any push at all from the stable, I want to be with him rather than against him because I do feel he's got a bit of upside. He, he gets past King of Clubs on the um, get past King of Clubs who's ridden up late here. And yeah, like I say, he's lightly race. He's seasoned now. Trials are good enough. And I thought he probably represented, uh, if there was any danger to this favourite, I think he could well be the one. But I, I like I noticed, I love what he did. I know it was no no real disadvantage sitting wide at Rose Hill the other day, but he did a lot of work. I thought he was very, very brave. Uh, prior to that, he was so dominant, uh, winning. So I'm with a notice, he's up and running. Save on Waltham if I'm going to get $17. I have to save on him. First light. Not far away, first up over unsuitable distance, a month in a trial since, sure to have him ready for his preferred 2,000 metres here, and Monarch's Bray will give a kick from up near the lead. Yeah, if it's not a notice, I don't really know where to go. Uh, he does it one of the standouts, and I think $3.70 is OK. Six, Aristonis, he can be hard to catch, but on his day, he is capable of rattling home a big closing split. Forgive what he did there first up. Uh, that was his first exposure on a heavy track, and he didn't look all that comfortable. First light, still might be a run short, but respect the booking of James McDonald and the intent jumping 14 to 2,000 metres. He wasn't given much of a hope there first up uh, when Friendless has an $81 chance and he wasn't beaten all that far, two and a half lengths and all in the mind. Uh, has to stretch out to the 2,000 metres but got back into the winner's stall a few weeks ago. Getting closer to our features uh, very soon, the San Dominico. The Cabravale Diggers handicap over 1,500 metres is a benchmark 78. We're up to race five. Yeah, and we have our best backed runner across the entire program here in the shape of up and under. It was 20 to 1 first up, didn't have any luck at all. James McDonald goes on. We put up $4.60 yesterday and got absolutely smashed. It was 4 dollars all the way into 3.30, just a few bets around it this morning. It's just now back out to 3.60, but remains that best back runner on the program. Lethal Thoughts, uh, it's also in, in Melbourne. It was six out to nine bets for it at $9 this morning. Now back into 6.50, but I think, Ron, it's more likely to run in Melbourne. So uh, that's the word from uh, Kieran. He's, um, he said Melbourne, so we'll, we'll, we'll trust that. Yep. Unusual Legacy, also a drifter yesterday. It was 8.50 out to 9.50, but bets today for it back into 7. Uh, too much caviar a firm, 11 into 9. Uh, Zondia, no drama, just out of roll there, 9.50 out to 10. Carbonados, um, also a drifter, 7.50 out to $11. Also a dual acceptor, it's also in in Melbourne as well. So a few decisions to be made there, but up and under, best backed runner across the program. Yep, there's a speed comes from out wide with no drama, who's uh, pretty tough on pacer. Um, Carbonaros all depends if he comes here. Regal Poms in Melbourne as well, or Brisbane, Melbourne, I'm sure. So, a little bit up in the air, too much caviar jumping up in distance will be typically on speed there. So, could be a little bit distorted that, um, that map as far as the pressure's concerned, with two of these runners, two or three of these runners, um, could come out. Here is up and under. This was his first up run a month ago. Yeah, hard to miss, hard to miss. And he was hard to miss in the yard. He, he looked a different horse. He looked really good skin on him. He'd done well. Um, I think he was gelded coming into this preparation. And this is his second prep and he starts off with this. So if, there, if anything, I'm worried about being such a bunch finish and whether the form's any good at all. But still, look at him. He, he, he might have put two lengths on them and he runs right through the line. Uh, Chris Waller, in his podcast on Wednesday morning, said he went to the paddock for a week. So maybe he mightn't have pulled up as well. Uh, so it hasn't been full steam ahead with him. So, yeah, maybe I don't know what the theory is to that, but obviously not too much. Saw High Blue Sea in that race and then a fortnight later, is involved in this one as well. Yeah, he ties the form in, doesn't he? Which suggests that there's probably not a lot between the majority of these. So here is the secondary form reference, and I don't think it becomes much clearer because it's again, a similar race. <laughs> it's almost identical, isn't it? So you've got a really bunchy finish. There's nothing between a lot of them. The winner dives through late at $31. The horse that I've got eyes for is the one that runs 10th, actually, and that's Cadetship. Now, he got smashed out of the, the barriers in the early stages, copped the squeeze, did a stack of early work to get into a winning position, and had, not, had nothing left at the finish. And he made some ground on the, the inferior part of the track. So $26. Hmm. 
Or would you like something different? What about an unusual so. legacy? Now, I went back to his first up run at this track and distance last preparation. It was a slowly run race and he, he was never going to sprint with these horses when they let rip, but I thought he was outstanding. I reckon he's a, I've always liked him. I think he's a real progressive staying type, this fella. Um, he's had his two trials. Um, he's, he's all legs and still learning what the game's all about, but I, I, th I think if he runs to something like this, he's got a terrific little hope here. Um, he just warms up through the line and I don't think the inside was the right place to be this day as it turned out as well. So I, if McDonald was on him, he might be favourite in a race like this. So I, I just, I, I'm, I'm very interested in him. Okay, and our final replay for this race, Money from the Sky, who's first up. Yeah, well, if he's out the back here, unusual legacy, and he's all legs and still learning, he's going to be in good company <laughs> with this fella. He's but this, this bloke's been learning for five years. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thrill seekers only scenario with him, isn't it? The first half of the race, he just gets completely lost, uh, but he can finish off. And his first up form is fantastic. He was a big winner first up at Canterbury last campaign. Even his two fresh runs prior to that uh, was behind the likes of... I had it written down here somewhere, but it was Pavitra and Kabling. Pretty good form references mm. for a race like this. Yeah, look, I'm brainwashed with this horse. Um, well, after that first up run up and under, I've got him on top. Like I said, I'm terrified of his stable, mate. Look for any late market moves on him or how he, how, how he presents. High Blue Sea was terrific the other day covering ground, and he's a real dry tracker. And Zondi, similar, he dragged back from that wide draw, and he's gone to barrier one. He can be six lengths closer in a race like this, and he is a big, big improver. So, not cut and dry the race. Yeah, some trepidation, but I'm also tipping uh, up and under, and it looks like we'll get a little deduction with that second favourite likely to come out. So just keep the powder dry for the time being. Money from the sky, he is a genuine knockout hope here. Just never an easy watch. Cadet Chip uh, profiles as the big improver, was a good winner first up. I do think he's come back well, and that was a hidden run there last time out. An unusual legacy, nice and fresh, can sprint well. Rightio, race six, the Smithfield RSL San Domenico Stakes, the first of our two features, this one over the 1100. Yeah, really looking forward to this race and there's been plenty happening in the betting here. We put up a market off the nominations on Monday. We did bet $3.50 about Gatsby's, the only horse we laid all in. Uh, Switzerland was also nominated for the race, didn't accept. Um, and also Stormboy, there wasn't a dollar for it all in. So Gatsby's 3.50 into even money. Uh, all in. I put up evens yesterday. It's just out of roll. Evens out to that $2.10 quote. Stormboy, I put up $2.50 after not writing a bet for it all in. I put up $2.50 final field. I thought I'd definitely have it on my side at that quote. But we got out to 270, wrote some good bets at 270. It's back into 240. Hold wise, there's barely a dollar between them, Gatsby's and Stormboy. But I do note Stormboy down to trial on Friday at Ramwick. I'm yes. not sure if a decision's been made yet there. So We'll wait and see what happens there. There's also money for the stable mate of Stormboy, Mayfair. It's been $8 into $6.50. King of Russo, a firm, $26 into $17. And then no real money for the others there. Tropicus, Perspiration, Odin Sun, I believe, might be going to Brisbane as well. An extreme diva rounds out the betting there. But a good battle for favouritism at the top at this stage, Gatsby's and Stormboy. Yep, uh, stable mates um, both go forward together here. You've got Stormboy, Mayfair, both in the top two. Um... Where do we look there from there? Maybe Extreme Diva just kicks up behind him. And I think Gatsby's probably, um, it's a little bit tricky, but I think he might even stride forward and get a push across from Mayfair and hopefully for him lands in the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, how this track's playing to this point mm. might be critical as far yeah, as tactics I think so. go there. I think they were going to ride him a bit closer the other day, but they just went out quick and he made, it was the plan B he went to. Mm. So, yeah. All right. Well, here's Gatsby's first up win in the Rosebud. Yeah, look, um, you had to be impressed. That uh, brilliant turn of speed that he put the field away with here. It looked a solid enough field on paper. And when he shook him up, he just went bang. Um, I went there wanting to pot him. Well, I thought he was a little foley thing, as he, but he really developed a lot. He's still a, a real nuggety little sprinter. Um, but you have to like that. How soft was it? He was just very, very good. And he's the, well, we're about to find out if he's the new kid on the block. Mm. Uh, Mayfair had a couple of uh, runs in the winter 
and his latest uh, start, his win, was only 42 days ago. Yeah, so he's got some residual fitness, doesn't he? He's got the, the benefit of a good racing pattern. He'll get out in front, he'll do his thing, he gets blinkers first time. Now, as a tie-in, he was beaten by Brave One on debut by a length, and Brave One was subsequently beaten three lengths by Gatsby's. I know it's dangerous to draw straight lines when doing the form, but that is some kind of reference in terms of why Gatsby's is a, a $2.10 favourite. But he's got something about him, this horse. I like the way that he's tried up, and I nice little tick over just to keep him up to the mark and he'll be out in front and uh, give them all something to chase down. Well, Storm Boy, he uh, started a $2.60 favourite in a golden slipper. He was the talk. He was the talk to yeah. you from start to finish. And he's just been so divisive all the way through. Uh, there's the believers, there's the, the, the people that think he's overrated, people think he's been trialling well. There's others that say, I wanted to see a bit more. I don't think he's been trialling like a true 1100 metre horse, as funny as that sounds given he's won his heats, he's been given a shove, this is over the 850 metres, uh, the stable are saying he'll improve with the run, he's a, a quite a big imposing yeah, what's, uh, two year old three What's he going to look like Roddy, because he was a tank as a two year old. He was, wasn't he? So they put one of them stallion chains to keep him under control there, that's, that's right. a gear change. Look, he's maligned, all of a sudden he's maligned mm. for, for barrier trials. Yeah I know. He's got performance on the board. He does. Um, He's interesting. But he's in the back of my mind is the fact that the stable are saying that his grand finals are 1,400 well, and 1,600 metres. You know, he's a very expensive colt. You've got to cover your backside somewhere. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I'm falling for the, the trap of Gatsby's here. He was just too good the other day. Um, I'm not disrespecting to a Storm Boy at all. No surprise if he's just too good for them. Um, like I said, he's... I agree that the trials are a little inconclusive, but he's more of a, uh, he's a different horse now as a three-year-old, and he's not just a running on fear two-year-old. Yeah, and he's never been that super he's not gonna, sharp. He's not going to throw this race away. Yeah. Uh, so, um, he's, um, I don't know if I'm betting into the race, I'm going to watch it. Mayfair, I love it when they they show intent, the Waterhouse Bot team with a trial like that, with the blinkers on, you know, he's going to just run like like anything here with those blinkers on Mayfair, and he's not a bad horse. And Perspiration, I think he's a horse for later on, but keep an eye on him for future reference. Yeah, interesting, we've both found a spot for Perspiration. Mm. Uh, he's always had the makings of a nice three-hour, but Gatsby's on top. He's the horse with the run on the board, so the great unknown is how well Storm Boy is going to go here first up. I have no read whatsoever in terms of what the market is going to do with him. Either way, I wouldn't be surprised. Perspiration, your knockout hope, and Mayfair uh, will do his thing out in front. Okay, the up and coming is next. The second of our three-year-old features is the up-and-coming, the CMNL up-and-coming. It's over the 1,300. Favourite here, Autumn Glow. Went up odds on yesterday. Uh, it's just 195 out to even money, uh, but there's plenty of money for it at that even money quote. Uh, it's the second best back runner across the program. I think that at that even money quote, we're probably just being a little bit conservative to this point, but we'll see how it Folds out to Saturday. Axius, your second pick there, rock solid as a $5.50 chance and with some good money for it all in, as much as $9 bet about it. Wanarua is a firm yesterday, $8 into $6.50. Stablemate Shangri-La Express, just out of touch, $9 out to $9.50. At longer odds, uh, there's been money for Enriched uh, off that midweek win, $15 into $13. And the best, uh, one of the best backed runners here has been Snack Bar. Um, some really good bets for this horse. It was $19 out to $23. We laid the $23 this morning. Now back into $14. And it's actually our worst way in the race, Snack Bar. Interesting move for Snack Bar. Just hard held with one soft trial. It's, uh, it might, uh, might be fancy, but... Well, one of Rua and Axie has come across together. Shangri-La Express will be aggressive at 1300 although he's got the big weight and media well just behind them. Happy to take a sit. Um, Autumn Glow, how far back does she have to go? Don't know. Uh, don't know. I could, couldn't imagine her wanting to match it with these early. Uh, so she's, yeah, it's a little bit sticky that map for her, I thought. 
Well, here she is. What a day out she had. What an experience she had on her first day at the races. She took it all in mm -hmm. and she did this. And what an impression she made. So she's firmed up into Flight Stakes favourite and she was just sitting there in her box uh, after that silver shadow on Saturday. So here she was in a benchmark 72 over the same track and trip. She levels up to them and rips clear at the finish to beat Dawn Service who came out of a fast race there at Hawkesbury. So yeah, you can say on paper she's having a jump now from a benchmark 72 straight into group company at her second career start, but everything is within the context of the rivals and Axius is the second favourite and he comes off a midweek win. Mm. Well, here is Axius. Yeah, he's an interesting horse. He's well bred. He um, treats these uh, horses with pretty well contempt here. Um, gets to 1200 second start, does it well. Uh, second horse come out and did the right thing at Canterbury yesterday, uh, Harry's Bar. But, yeah, a lot to like about him. Stable likes him a lot. Um, and he, he might be some threat to this favourite. Um, he, he looks a pretty switched on horse uh, from the right yard who's um, ready to be very, very competitive here. All right, back to Gatsby's Rosebud. Shangri-La Express was just unwanted this day. Yeah, interesting. He's, I know he's got to give him five kilos plus. That's probably the dampener. But I've been waiting for him to, to get to this little bit extra distance where he can get in more to his rhythm this horse he seems to be a horse that's always under pressure 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 and in the 1300 I could just see him traveling and getting into his rhythm a lot better and I think 950s overs uh, even though there's a big weight to worry uh, and he gets he gets beat well beaten here but doesn't throw it away so uh, I think we're pretty quick to sack him I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so sure we should okay bit like um Mayfair in the previous, Wanarua, a couple of uh, winter runs and then, and then that gap, little gap. Yeah, there's a bit of guts to this horse. So you look at his replays and they're nothing spectacular to the eye. Visually, you're like, yeah, he's a tradesman-like style of horse. But both wins have been dominant and both wins he's run really good time. Uh, here he is in his trial. That's him. Uh, don't read too much into the fact that he was given an eagle. He'll slide across from the gate, 54 and a half kilos. And if those horses that can make their own luck are getting a fair crack, yeah, he's, he's hard enough to chase down. Not surprised there's been a nibble of support. She looks pretty good. Um, I still think she's going to be better next prep, the uh, Autumn Glow. She's, she's still, I'd say raw, because she did everything right the other day, but she's still de developing and, um, but if they're happy to run her here. What happened to poor old Tyler? He got uh, moved on pretty quick after a perfect ride there last start. Uh, uh, got the K-Mac, Pat, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Axis, I'm terrified of. Shangri-La Express will run boldly. Media World's in for a good prep. Whether he's uh, wound up for a race like this, I doubt. Yeah, the market looks to have this race pretty well cornered, but I can't tip against Autumn Globe. We'll get a, a couple of looks at this track in terms of if it's no disadvantage to be coming from the back half of the field. Uh, she should get a chance to, to round these up just as she did there on debut where she was so dominant and so impressive. Axius, uh, he'll spear forward. I think he gets a free tag across from Wanarua, so they'll both be hard enough to chase down. And Media World, there's good wraps around him at the moment. I know Peter Snowden's very happy with how he has returned and he should get a lovely spot on the map. All right, we've got a high benchmark in uh, race number eight, the Bankstown Sports Club Handicap. It's a benchmark 100, and it's over 1,500. Yeah, we've got a good move for a couple at the top here. Uh, we'll start with Rides at Dawn. It's been as much as $6 into $3.60, but it's also an acceptor in Melbourne, and I believe most likely to run there. So just be a little bit careful with this market going forward. Chol Wolf, also a really good firm, $4.60 into $3.70. And money-wise, there's been twice as much for Chol Wolf as there was for Rise at Dawn, I'm more victorious. I quite like this horse. Uh, was happy to put it up favourite, uh, but haven't written many bets for it at this stage. 360, it's out to $4 chance. Charterhouse unchanged at $11. We get to see Land Legend uh, resuming from a spell here. Uh, had a fractured fetlock after that impressive win at its first start in Australia. Put away, uh, resuming here $15 into $14. Uh, there is money for it, resuming. Rears down there, $17 chance. No money for Barkshi Shadow, um, first up from a spell. It's been 15 out to 18. And at longer odds, not on that page, but we've written some bets for Cuban Royale, $51 into $41. Yeah, well, if Rise to Dawn stays in Melbourne, it leaves it a beautiful map here for um, a more victorious, getting control at 1500 uh, here at Rose Hill on a drying track late in the day. Uh, so United will tag and can't see much else happening. It's a racy 
he's got complete ownership of. Communist will be a lot closer from an inside draw this time rather than dragging back from the wide draw last time. This was a uh, spring preview from a fortnight ago where he was very well fancied and more victorious. Couldn't hold out Tom. No, TKF form, Tom Kitten form. Uh, it should be good. Uh, he was pretty dominant at the finish, but I don't think he lost too much in defeat here. He was just eyeballed at a, probably a middle stage there where he was just looking to get a bit of a breather. Now, at this point in the race, it looked like he was going to be swallowed up maybe run somewhere midfield but to his credit he kept boxing on uh, he was a big winner second up last campaign so i do think he's come back just as well he's in better grade now so he needs to keep improving but he's got a great racing style strips that a little bit fitter and yeah if that scratching does come out as we anticipate uh, that'll make it just a touch easier for him to, to ride the speed here's the victorian the consistent rise at dawn uh, yeah, look, um, going really well, there's no doubt about it. Um, it's, a, like I say, an unlikely runner here, but um, hard to pop the, the recent form. Three wins, two seconds, the past five starts, and, and five wins this preparation. So genuine, uh, rides the speed, in form. Um, this was a benchmark 100, so it's hard to line the form up, but has to be respected if he does get on the float uh, this afternoon. He's a 10-year-old, Ryazan. You know what? I, I kept looking at him the other day, and the, he was about, I, I don't know what he was, he was about 80s into about 20s at one stage there, and I thought, what are they doing here? And he had the hide to loom up and say, I'm, I'm going to come at you, Williamsburg. I thought, although the money wasn't too far off the mark here. And you go back through some of his runs, he, although he hasn't won in many years now, he, this is not a bad run considering circumstances. So, I think he's got a place chance with that uh, 53 and a half on his back. I thought there was a lot of merit in that, that performance. Runner up in the Coffs Harbour Cup Charter House. Well, he's fit and he's ready to win another race. So he's, he's amongst the chances here. He, he, um, he, he runs on strongly here. He, he makes a good ground behind Time Quest who pretty well owned the race. But um, he was good the last little bit. So he's a fit Kieran Ma horse. Um, who, uh, you know, probably should be respected. There's, there's no doubt about it. And they are our replays while we watch uh, Charterhouse get to the line uh, and probably qualifies for a little dance at this stage. Yeah, that's a good option for him. Look, I, I think he just owns this race. I'm all victorious. I think he wins. I think it's his race to lose. He can, doesn't have to improve much and um, I think... Um, Josh knows him well, he'll lead, he'll quicken, he'll get their wheels spinning and he'll be up and gone. Cheer Wolf probably wanted more pressure to drag him into the race, but he's a very promising middle distance horse in the making. A big improver is Communist and this land legend, I, I couldn't imagine he'd be wound up for a race like this, but he could be a real couple, a little sneaky Metrop Cups chance, this horse, but all eyes are on him. I think he'll run, he can't do anything but run well. His trials are, I thought he's moved quite nicely. Yeah, I'm not sure where he's heading, but I've had something mm. small on him in a Caulfield Cup. Mm, okay. Thinking that he There's all those little options, way. you know, yeah. I don't know whether it's Sydney, Melbourne. His trials have been great, haven't they? For a stayer, he's looked particularly sharp, but a more victorious on top for me. Uh, che Wolf, I uh, didn't touch on him in that replay, I should have, because uh, his run was quite good. He didn't have that instant acceleration, uh, but as far as matching it with Tom Kitten, his sectionals home were just as sharp. So the query I had was whether he's just wanting a touch further. This might be that gap run he needs to have to get him out to 2,000 metres third up. Land Legend has a lot against here. First up, almost a year on the sidelines. Uh, he's drawn wide, but look for him to be flashing home at the finish. And Berkshire Shadow can uh, run a bit of a race here. I think we thought he was OK last start without much luck. All right, we've got two more races to look at on this Rose Hill card. Uh, they can run 18 here at the uh, 1,200 metres, uh, which is what we've got in race 9. We've got 18 plus two emergencies. Let's have a look at the market for the Mounties group, 88. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great betting race come Saturday and already a few really good moves here, including your favourite, Will I Do. It's the best-backed runner in the race, $5 into $4, draws Barry 2 with James McDonald on. Piastri uh, went up equal favourite with Willido, but it is a drifter, uh, quite soft, $5 
out to $6. She's an A-lister. Back in class has seen some good support. $9 into $6.50. Big move for Iron Man. As much as $17 bet about it from the wide gate. It's now a $10 chance. Blanc de Blanc also in the last race into Drifter here. Nine out to 10. Felix Majestic, the other big firm at Long Rods. $26 first price we bet about it. It's now a $12 chance. It's our worst way in the race there. Felix Majestic. Um, and then... A uh, horse not on that page, but we've seen some support for Battleton. Had no luck last time out. It's been 21 into 18 and a loser in our book. Well, what have we got here? Um, you make a case for everything here, and look at that speed. It's a whole different race here. Uh, the face, if he gets a run, you've got Belado, loves to lead. Kabu will kick up. Uh, you've got Felix Majestic, who loves the fight up front. Bubba's Bay gets a lovely run just behind them, and so does she's an A-lister. They, they look the map horses to me because this is very, very fast. OK, this is a month ago. Felix Majestic and uh, you've got Dalalat. Yeah, well, Dalla will appreciate a dry track and a fast tempo. Uh, that's his bread and butter. So Felix Majestic, how much pressure can he absorb? Uh, that's the gamble, isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah, he's a tough horse, and he's shown in the past that he can ride a fast speed and still keep kicking, and that's exactly what he did here in defeat. When you're eyeballing much, much better and you're still fighting out the finish, uh, you're doing something right. So catch me if you can. I'm just thinking that last 50 metres, uh, he'll be doing well to hang on. And this is a fortnight ago. This is the race where Kazoo, uh, was uh, not, uh, yeah, Kazoo. Kazoo came from last. Yes, she half missed the start and got back and, and rattled home. Uh, so as far as this race goes, a bit of a bunchy finish. I thought Battleton uh, was the horse that didn't have any luck whatsoever. He can be a little bit hard to catch, but he's another one that'll relish uh, a fast run race. Caboose trips that little bit fitter. Bubba's Bay will continue to improve as she gets into her preparation. I do like the map for her. I think she could potentially just dive back in behind the leaders. And Cavalier Charles expected a little bit more from him late, uh, but he was okay to the line. He wasn't beaten far. So we're going to go through a lot of replays here and you can make cases right down the page. Mm. Uh, Will Ado got the money this day? Yeah, look, going really well. Um, he's a, a real genuine horse. He's a six-year-old, but he hasn't been over-raced. Over and he loves to ride the speed and control, and as he did here. He got a few favours uh, early in this race where he, he got such a soft lead. So I thought he... I think he's short enough in a race there's got to be holes in the market somewhere uh, because this is a whole different race where he's got to withstand pressure and it's a whole different race to what he found here, but he just doesn't run bad. So he's likeable to a certain extent, although it should be 7 or $8 the field this race, I say. She's an A-list is coming back from a Group 2 missile to this uh, benchmark 88. I thought she was the one that maps well. Um, I think she just got enough speed to keep within two or three lengths of them, and if she gets the run at the right time, this is a, the nice style of race for her. She was uh, great first up, winning, um, wrong part of the track second up, did enough here, and presents here in down in class in a winnable race where I think the map is okay for her. So I've referred to her um, being top pick here in a very tough race. Uh Punters have got good money out of Piastri. It's last two starts in Melbourne and Sydney. Yeah, he's come back well, hasn't he? So he's a, a pretty sharp horse. There he was just riding the speed, tucked in behind, and he was pretty dominant through the line. And he was 1,200 back to 1,100 metres. So if anything, he sets up even better here, out to the 1,200 metres. His win prior to this was just as impressive. Thunderlips got a big pass mark for me here, uh, 1,100 metres. He just got left flat-footed there at the 400. But look at him come again through the line. So out to the 1,200 metres, that little bit fitter. I like what he did last campaign, particularly second up. So he did improve with the run under his belt and I think he profiles similar this time in. Yeah, they'll lay every runner here. Um, I'm tipping she's an A-lister with no confidence at all, just on that mapping angle and the speed of the race. Uh, I think the hole in the market is Bubba's Bay at $26 or, or better. Um, two runs back are great. She presents well, mapping well. Uh, back to a drier track suits her. Thunderlips on him the other day. I, I just thinking there's a chance he might be more of a third up horse. Uh, maybe 13, 1400, but he's going to be a black booker again here, but I'm not leaving him out. And Milano goes in reluctantly because there are other options. Piastri I'd, I wanted to like, but first time on a dry track. So there's a lot of these horses, you know, are we 
getting carried away with wet winter form. Yeah, it's a nasty leg for the for the quaddy, yeah. isn't it? How wide do you go? Uh, you could have 10 here and still miss. But Thunderlips, $13, I think that's fair enough. I liked his first up run. And that flag to me, like he was a horse that I wanted to follow at his subsequent starts. She's an A-lister. Bjorn Baker uh, has a strong hand here. Uh, given she was $7 there in a missile stakes and wasn't beaten far, that reads like a strong form reference for this. Piastri, no knock. He's going well. He's fit and he's flying. If there is a sneaky knockout, maybe it is overriding. I do like the way that she's trialled. Kobe Jennings uh, comes to town for the one ride and first up last campaign she was fifth behind Chain of Lightning so there might be something there. Alright, last race clubs New South Wales handicap it's over 1100, a benchmark 78 to finish off this card. Big firm for unbeaten galloper Briasa here. Uh, originally put it up second favourite yesterday, $4.60. They took that. They even took $3.30 this morning. So money for it yesterday and today, Briasa really well backed. Headwall, it was the horse I had favourite. It's been $3.60 out to $4.20. Blanc de Blanc, uh, rock solid as a $6 chance and unchanged. Sebenac just out of roll, six out to six fifty. dollars Boston Rocks, draws gate one. I thought I'd get a great run here, but no money for it. $4.60 out to $6.50. Now we've got Sir Ravenelli and Rocket Tiger. They both went up $26, both got to $41 this morning, and we laid them both at $41 this morning. So they're back into $21 um, and some good, good bets for them at those quotes. Uh, the bolter, Dr. Poet, De Poet, I mean, he's uh, very fast. Uh, you got to face if he runs here instead of the other race. Who goes quick and Cara and Gara fresh. Tri State on his day. Nice little sit there for uh, Boston Rocks as uh, Tim forecasts there. Uh, now, Headwall, first up on the Kenzo. Yeah, he may have been flooded here, uh, given he was the horse that probably handled the conditions best. It was a wet track, and he did get to the right part of the surface on the Kenzo. However, he really puts them to the sword. So an encouraging return, given he was 33 weeks on the sidelines prior. He's a horse with a fantastic strike rate, four wins from eight starts, and four minor placings. So he takes another step forward into a, a bit deeper race again. But on the strength of this, he's come back maybe even a little bit better again. So I think he's the horse to beat as well. This is Sebenak and Boston Rocks behind our Kobe son. The challenge for Sebenak, so this on face value was a great run uh, behind, behind our Kobe son, and that form has been franked behind Jolly Star. However, his best form in the past has been 1,000 metres and fresh. Can he hold that form second up? 1100 metres. If he can, he's a huge player here, but that was just a little niggle for me. Uh, 59 and a half kilos, that looks okay. Maps to get the right run in behind a, a genuine speed. So other than that little query, uh, he does fit in quite neatly. Uh, the unbeaten four-year-old gelding, Briasa. Yeah, he wins the trial nicely here, the grey. He's uh, an interesting horse. He's um, been untouchable so far in three starts to date, made in 64-72. So, uh, Saturday race now and looks well fancied off just the one trial um, coming into a 1100 metre race. I won't let that worry me. Yeah, he's, he's likeable, but um, well, I suppose we're about to find out if he's over bet or not. He's, he's short enough, but obviously a talent for sure. And uh, Blanc de Blanc comes back to benchmark grade. Yeah, I like her. I, I really do. She was really good as a two-year-old. She went around six in a golden slipper. I remember first up uh, back, it's way back in February, but she was v a huge tip at um, Melbourne at Caulfield in a stakes race and she pulled up lame there. She had one more run, had no luck. They found McDonald first up in a, a race that she could win and um, although I'm keeping the powder dry, I'm putting her on top here, just on suspicion. I think the trials are well uh, uh, and she's done enough work to suggest that she's uh, well, the two trials should have her ready for a race like this. She's on top of Briasa. I'll throw in Headwall, who was dominant the other day, and Boston Rocks will run really well with a good map. I think we're going to stick with Headwall to win again. Briasa, uh, I'd be more confident 1,200 metres, 1,100 metres, but he's looked pretty sharp in his trials, and he does look to be a horse going places. Three from three, you can't do much more than that. The stablemate, Sebenac, hard to beat, and Blanc de Blanc, you do have to respect a horse that only last campaign did start $3.50 in a race won by Estriella. Right here, what are your best? My best is a more victorious, and I think the next best is a notice. Yeah, keen on the chances of a notice as well, so best for me, race four, number three, and the next best uh, will go to the midway. I think it's Arts Day, race one, number three. Okay, and that is our look at Rose Hill Garden, San Domenico, and the up and coming are features, and you'll see it right here on Sky Thoroughbred Central. We're on down south.